Welcome to Marketplace Tech Bytes, our weekly review of some of the big stories making headlines across the industry and maybe some that you might have missed. I'm Megan McCarty Carino. This week, what Trump's pick for vice president means for Silicon Valley. A Senate report has found that Amazon's Prime Day is a major driver of worker injuries. And Starbucks and Mercedes-Benz are joining forces on EV charging. For her take on the week's stories, I'm joined by our regular contributor, Jewel Burke-Solomon. She's a managing partner at Colab Capital. Welcome, Jewel. Hi, Megan. Great to be here. And as always, we're going to start with our bite of the week. This is, of course, a number that says a little something about the week that was in tech. So, Jewel, what is your number this week? My number this week is 12 million, and that is the amount that was reported raised at a fundraiser hosted by David Sachs in Silicon Valley for Trump. Um, And that number is important this week, I think, because of the news around J.D. Vance's or Trump's pick of J.D. Vance as the vice president and Silicon Valley's seeming support of that selection. Right. So I I, I brought a number which was kind of a a hedging of a number, less than five. That's how long uh, J.D. Vance worked in the tech industry for sort of less than five years. In that time, obviously managed to make some pretty powerful allies and deep-pocketed allies, as you note. Uh, Tell me, you know, who is excited about this J.D. Vance pick in Silicon Valley and, and what are they excited about? Yeah, you're right. Less than five years and a questionable success rate in the in the industry. And I have to disclose I had an opportunity to meet J.D. Vance during his time at Revolution, uh, which is Steve Case's fund out of D.C. He was only there for 18 months. Um, and I don't know if it was a great fit, given that that fund really focuses on investing in uh, folks who are from all over the, the country and really focusing on places where there isn't typically a lot of venture capital distribution. Um, But, you know, you're right. He did find some really uh, deep pocketed mentors during his time, most notably Peter Thiel. Um, It said that he attended a speech that Peter Thiel gave while he was a student at Yale and they built a relationship from there. And Peter has been one of the uh, largest contributors to J.D. Vance's campaigns, Uh, when he ran for Senate in 22, and continues to support his work. And so, yes, he's made a a very quick ascension in terms of politics. um, And thanks in large part, I think, from some of the relationships that he's built in the tech industry. So this VP announcement came as we have seen over the last week and maybe over the last months, kind of this growing turn towards Trump in the tech world. Uh, I mean, what do you think is going on there? Because this feels like a such an about face from, you know, the previous two elections where tech is obviously has been known as such a strong democratic, you know, stronghold. What do you think explains the shifts that we're seeing? Yeah, I have to take a deep breath on this one, but I think it comes down to a few major topics that the powers that be in the tech industry are really concerned about. Number one is taxes. Uh, People in tech have done very well over the last few years, many people, and particularly the investors that are really funding some of these uh, campaigns and putting a lot of dollars toward uh, Trump's campaign in particular. And they're very concerned about some of the tax Uh, implications of a continued Biden administration, Um, but they see Trump as in their same boat in, in, you know, looking to do things that will be advantageous to them from a a tax perspective in terms of tax cuts. Um, They're also very concerned about regulation. They have seen particularly Lena Khan at the FTC as someone who has been um, standing in the way of activity as it relates to acquisitions and mergers Um, and really liquidity in the market. And so they see that Trump potentially will be more on their side uh, to just get business done and have uh, more uh, accessibility around mergers and acquisitions. They're also thinking about crypto. Uh, That's still on folks' mind. And again, a lot of regulation around crypto today that they see Trump being a lot friendlier toward and 
even I think there's a nudge, you know, the Winklevoss twins are huge in the Bitcoin space and they gave a, a million dollars in Bitcoin to Trump's campaign. So just a nudge to, to move things along there. Um, and then AI, obviously, that's been on everyone's tongue uh, recently. And people are really putting a lot of money into AI and they're concerned to make sure that uh, the AI companies that are developing are not overregulated as well. So I think those are some of the big kind of topic areas that the folks in technology are seeing Trump's policy, potential policy being more on their side. And I think they are willing that these uh, leaders are willing to sacrifice all of the sort of more social reasons, maybe not to vote for Trump in favor of their pocketbooks. Yeah, certainly there seems to be some, you know, kind of policy regulation alignments there. I'm curious, though, you know, if you think that um, all of this is sort of tech kind of moving toward the right or, you know, did the Democratic Party in some ways move away from tech over these last eight years? I think there could be arguments on both sides of what you just said, Megan. Um, The reality is it has been more difficult for uh, tech, large tech businesses to operate, big tech to operate. Uh, something I found interesting, though, was the some leaders such as Mark Andreessen and Ben Horowitz of, from A16Z, they really cite little tech and they think about you know the tech startups and their ability to grow and scale as their reason for getting behind Trump. Um, and, and their perspective is that there has been a bit of a turn in the Democratic policy against Uh, smaller companies being able to grow and scale to be big companies one day. So it's not all about uh, big tech and regulation. It's also about can these smaller companies grow and scale? And that's really what has led them to be in favor and contribute to Trump's campaign. Um, So I think it could be argued on both sides, but it is a huge turn. And, you know, more consequentially, probably it is the fact that there are so many of these tech leaders, investors, who are now contributing in a huge and meaningful way to the Trump campaign. I got to go back to something you said about Lena Khan, who is obviously, you know, probably not a super popular person in in tech circles. She has made big tech one of her kind of um, projects to to go after as the chair of the Federal Trade Commission. However, uh, J.D. Vance, you know, kind of known as a a populist politician, he has expressed support for, for Lena Khan. I mean, how does that play out in Silicon Valley? Yeah, I think, you know, that's one thing that's a bit confusing. If you look at the policy and decision making of J.D. Vance, it doesn't align with what some of these um, tech leaders are saying as far as the reasons why they want to support Trump. As you note, he's been very vocal and supportive of Lena Khan and supportive of breaking up big tech. So it's kind of confusing if you think about, you know, what's been said, but it aligns with the fact that he also was not a Trump supporter. Uh, he was a never Trump guy. And so that's changed. I guess perhaps they're betting on with him in their pocket, if you will, they can influence what his, um, perception and what his uh, perspective on policy will be moving forward. We'll see. But there is there is some um, misalignment there as far as what he's actually done and voted on in the past versus what the folks who are supporting Trump are wanting to happen as it relates to regulation. So I want to put politics aside and move on to uh, a topic that I think it's fair to say has united the country this week, which is shopping on Amazon. <laughs> uh, Amazon Prime Days happened this week. And a, a Senate report that that came out on Tuesday revealed that there are some kind of negative effects of all of these deals. What did that show? Yeah, it shows that Amazon doesn't do a great job of making sure that their workers are taken care of in in light of all of these um, major buying days or two major buying days in particular, Prime Day. Um, you know, Amazon has made billions of dollars in in Prime Days in, this year and past, but unfortunately, what we've seen is that the number of injuries reported goes way up during the prime season. Um, And that is a major problem. So there is a cost to us being able to get great deals on, you know, the gadgets that we need in our home, 
um, and get them delivered in one to two days, uh, the workers are paying a, a price for that. And crucially, I think, you know, Amazon is often the the leader in these kinds of things. But when Amazon does something, then kind of the rest of the e-commerce industry jumps in on it, right? Exactly. Yeah, I, I was actually shopping this week for a toddler bed. We're making a transition from our little one from a crib to a, a floor bed. And I was looking on Wayfair and I noticed that they also had, a, a, you know, a prime S. Uh, deal going on. And so it's interesting and it's important, I think, for Amazon to really correct the wrong of, you know, all of these injuries that are being reported so that the rest of the industry takes note and are making sure that things are safe for workers as they have to kind of double their hours or uh, double the speed uh, to get these items out the door into our homes. All right. So next item, maybe not something that, you know, came to the top of everyone's feed this week between those two other big things going on. But Mercedes Benz uh, announcing a partnership with Starbucks to expand uh, its network of DC fast chargers. This is of great interest to me as a sort of frustrated early generation EV driver who has found a lot of trouble trying to charge my car out in the world. I mean, what is Mercedes, you know, why partner with Starbucks for this? You know, I think this makes a lot of sense. So Mercedes is looking to put out a, this billion dollar project to bring chargers to Starbucks across the country and particularly um, near highways. And it makes a lot of sense because this idea of range anxiety or the, I, the thought that you may not have enough range to make it to your destination. It's something I've experienced as an EV owner for a number of years. And it's actually one of the number one sided reasons why people right. don't go ahead and purchase electric vehicles. And so I think this is an amazing project. It's really smart. You think about you stop for your morning coffee and you get a charge and make sure you can make it through the day. Um, so exciting to see uh, companies be creative to conquer this range anxiety and hopefully help more people sort of get on the EV bandwagon. Right. And sort of finding, you know, um, appropriate real estate has been a challenge for kind of the charging industry. I can imagine the idea just for consumers, the idea that you could know, OK, at the next Starbucks, which is sure to be close by, <laughs> I will find a charger that that would alleviate some of those concerns. Yeah, it, I think this this as you noted, it will alleviate those concerns. It solves some of the real estate problem that um, has been a, a challenge for those who want to put picks and in, in forks in the ground and, and get these charging stations built. So it makes sense. It's a really smart partnership and excited to see kind of what happens next here. Uh, provided the chargers are in working condition, which is one of my big complaints. <laughs> That's right? a whole nother thing. Yeah. You know, I think hopefully that also opens up opportunities for, you know, my lens is always about what what are startups doing in this space. And we've seen some really interesting startups around the charging market. Mm -hmm. uh, one in particular that comes to mind is Spark Charge that is looking at how do we get the range to folks wherever they are. Um, and so it's, it's going to be cool to see how this opens up new potential opportunities for business as well. All right, Jewel, we'll have to get your stories about J.D. Vance offline, <laughs> but it's been so fun to talk to you about this. Jewel Burke-Solomon at Colab Capital, so good to have you today. Thank you. And thanks to all of you for joining us for Marketplace Tech Bytes Week in Review. Make sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already to watch us every Friday. Rosie Hughes produced this week's episode, and I'm Megan mccarty Carino. This is APM.